Hey everyone, it's Lauren. Today's video, I am going to be helping find solutions for your biggest makeup struggles. These were submissions that came into my Instagram. I put a story up with a question of what are your biggest makeup struggles? And these are the answers or the, the questions that you all answered to my question. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. My skin is primed and prepped. I used my Coats SPF. This is the Face Prime and Protect Tinted SPF 40. This is really great for creating a really nice velvety finish. So let's jump into some questions. So someone wanted to know, you know, a concealer that doesn't fade, crease, look dry. And I think a lot of people run into this where things just really exacerbate the texture under your eyes. Um, or they tend to move around and, you know, fill in on those little lines that are immediately under your eyes. Or if you have more texture or crinkling around your eyes, settling into that. Um, I will say, in my personal experience, using any type of a really radiant or creamy concealer is a recipe for disaster for me. Um, being that it will tend to settle in those lines and almost highlight textural issues. So my personal pick for this is something that's going to be really, really long wearing, something like the Huda Beauty, something that you see that says like long wear or waterproof, those are gonna be really, really great solutions. So as you can see, this is a very high coverage concealer. It is like waterproof, life proof, everything proof. And you'll also notice that I am using a sponge. Sometimes I'll use a brush, but I have found with this type of coverage and uh, concealer, if you use a sponge, it really helps to make that texture just kind of melt into your skin. And you'll notice it doesn't really um, pick up that texture as much. It just kind of like smoothly puts a, a film over your skin. Sometimes with a brush, not always, but sometimes with a brush with these thicker formulas, it will almost kind of catch around any bumps or texture that you may have. I love this concealer so much because no matter how I turn, it makes my dark circles just completely gone. <laughs> the other thing about these more long wear waterproof type concealers is that because they are meant to be long wear, they almost tend to set down really fast. And so you don't necessarily get that creasing. I will say, I think if you're struggling with texture and dryness, the best thing that you can do is really to prep and moisturize your skin well beforehand rather than reaching for like a radiant or creamy concealer. Okay, so the next submission that came in is particularly challenging. And so this woman said, you know, one of her biggest issues is covering redness and that makeup gets stuck in her pores. So after her initial submission, I reached out to her and I had some more questions because I feel like understanding this kind of problem a little bit better can help with a solution. So she said that she is 50 and that she puts color concealers on to try to cancel the redness, but it ends up kind of separating and becoming like multicolored dots within her pores. So there's like a lot of different things happening here. You're trying to conceal the redness, you're ending up with patching and separation. Um, so I had some questions. I wanted to know, you know, what does your skincare routine look like? What type of products are you using right now? Um, and, you know, she said she was using things that are moisturizing. Um, and so, you know, I think there's a couple different ways to approach this. I think it's always really important if you're having a lot of separation and things like that, a lot of times that can signal that your skin is producing a lot of oil. And so um, I asked her, you know, do you consider your skin to be oily? And she said, yes. So I think it's counterintuitive, but sometimes when you are oilier, and your makeup is separating, sometimes you need to add more oil and moisture to your skin. Moisturize, not necessarily putting oil straight on your skin, but using a moisturizer will kind of help to balance your skin out because a lot of times when your skin is lacking in that moisture, it's gonna start to overproduce more and then you're gonna end up with issues with your makeup. So those were my initial questions about what was going on. Um, so I asked her, have you ever used a powder foundation? Something like Bare Minerals, something that is matte and doesn't have a shimmer to it because A, that's going to help to control some of the oiliness, but B, you can really build up and layer to cancel redness. I personally am a big, big fan of Bare Minerals Matte 
This formula is amazing because it really helps to cancel redness and it doesn't exacerbate texture. Um, I really fell in love with this when I was struggling so much with my periodontal dermatitis. I still get some redness around my nose and mouth, but this was like the only thing that I could use that didn't make my condition worse. And as someone who has kind of a combination skin type that I tend to get more oily through my T-zone, this is an amazing product for controlling that. And you can really build up the coverage if you need to. So let me show you. I'm just using a um, Merit brush to apply this. And what I like to do is do a very thin, fine layer kind of all over my face. And, you know, she was kind of like, well, wouldn't that make my pores look bigger? And I actually think it does the opposite. If you have a matte formula like this, the way that this particular product is so fine in texture, um, it makes your skin have like almost an airbrushed quality. And so that's why this is like my top recommendation. If you're struggling with separation, um, you're kind of oilier, you have texture that on your skin or you have a lot of redness. I think this is an amazing product to really make your skin look airbrushed and flawless and stay that way all day. So I particularly like this brush because it's dense. It's somewhat soft, but it has enough um, stiffness through those bristles that you can really build up the pigment should you need to. I wear the shade, I think it's Golden Ivory 07, if you're wondering. And so I didn't do a whole lot here. I'm going to show you how you can really build this product up. So I get some redness like right around here. And you can really kind of pack that on a little bit thicker. And then it will just seamlessly blend into the other makeup. So you can really get that custom coverage that you need. I'm telling you, this stuff is my secret weapon for when I have skin issues with dermatitis and redness. It is a lifesaver. And I just really like how it makes my skin look overall. So powder foundation, if you're struggling with pores, redness, oiliness, Give it a go, let me know what you think. All right, before we move into the next questions, I'm gonna pop on a little bit of bronzer and blush and some eyeshadow, and then we'll jump back in. All right, so we're back. So one of the next struggles that someone sent me was winged eyeliner. And I think this is a big struggle for a lot of people. So I asked her specifically, what are you struggling with? Is it the application? Is it the shape for your eyes? Is it getting them even? Is it the formula itself? Like what are your struggles with winged eyeliner? So she said more specifically, it's getting winged eyeliner to look right on her eye shape. So I asked her, what do you think your eye shape is? And she said she felt like it was almond. But then I, you know, I had to ask, do you think that they're hooded? Do, the, do you think they're deep set? There's so many different factors for getting the right eyeliner shape for your eye. And she said that she feels like they're kind of hooded. So when you have hooded eyes, and I struggle with this too because I have deep set eyes. My eyes are not hooded necessarily because I don't have skin that necessarily falls down, but I do have a very prominent brow bone and a very small amount of lid space that is available when my eyes are open. Um, which is also kind of fun because I end up with like peekaboo eyeshadow <laughs> when I close my eyes. Um, but anyway, I think one of the best ways to solve this is to apply your wing with your eye open. And that can feel really weird if you're not used to doing it. But the reason being, if you do have hooded eyes and you have this little fold of skin that kind of hangs down over where your lid space is, when you open and close your eyes, that line will jump if you're trying to apply your liner to your closed eye. And sometimes it'll end up with like a squiggly line. So I'm gonna show you kind of how I do this. I I kind of go back and forth between opening and closing. Um, but more specifically for hooded eyes, there's a technique called like a bat wing, where basically you make that line with your eyes open. And then when you close it, you can kind of connect it down. So I'll show you what that looks like. And you can even see on me where that floating bit is, because when I have my eye open, that looks connected to my eye. It's really not. 
as a general rule of thumb for me, I angle that up towards kind of the tail of my eyebrows. And then I personally, I struggle with this because my eyelashes are long and they kind of get in the way. But what you can do is draw across where you want it. And you'll notice like I've kind of got like a little hole here. So I'll fill that in. And you'll notice it kind of, when I close my eye, it looks like it goes like swoop, like down a little bit. So now what I'm gonna do is fill in close to my lashes. And you'll notice when I have my eye open, it looks pretty straight. There's a little bit of a dip there, right? And that's a really easy way to do it. So I'm gonna match it up on this eye. So the next struggle that I got is kind of a multifaceted one. It all has to do with the same type of makeup, which is mascara. So the first issue that someone said is, eyelashes falling flat after curling and applying mascara. Now this is a pretty common one. Um, I personally, I have an eyelash curler. I have a really good eyelash curler. It's actually fantastic and it really does hold a curl well but I don't curl my lashes because they're a little too long now that I use a lash serum and they naturally have some curves. So when I curl my eyelashes and apply a mascara, they go backwards into my eyebrow bone. So I don't personally struggle with this. So it can be difficult for me to really have a great solution, but I'll tell you what I know works for a lot of people. Curl your eyelashes and when you curl them, I'm not gonna curl mine because I won't be able to work with them afterwards. You go in normally, I want you to look at where my eyelashes are and you would crimp there at the base, right? And then you would rotate that out like so. And then one last time. And you don't wanna pinch so hard that you're gonna be breaking off your eyelashes. You just wanna hold nice, nice steady pressure. And you wanna hold, I don't know, anywhere from five to 15 seconds. It really just kind of depends on your eyelashes but you wanna give it time to work. You don't wanna be aggressive and really clamp down hard because you're gonna break off your eyelashes, but just good steady pressure and kind of rotate and you'll get a really beautiful fanned out effect. The next piece of advice, if you're having trouble with holding a curl, and a lot of people don't like this, personally, I don't like this, waterproof mascara though, because of the way that it kind of seals your lashes all the way around, it really will help to kind of lock them into place. Um, I do think for a waterproof formula, using something like the Maybelline Snapscara, which is a tubing formula, is actually fantastic. And that kind of brings me to my next point where I think that tubing formulas are fantastic. Um, they really kind of have those polymers that kind of lock them into place, similar to a waterproof mascara, but they're not a pain in the butt to remove. Um, I also think it's really important to make sure that you're not using a mascara that is too heavy or that is too um, liquidy either because sometimes like really liquidy, difficult to dry formulas will weigh your lashes down. So I think it's important to find a formula that's almost on the drier side that will actually hold your lashes up. Um, and the final question was a good clean mascara, which if you followed me for any amount of time, you know probably that I started blogging and uh, content creation when I was talking about clean beauty. And now I don't do that anymore um, for a couple of different reasons. But basically, if you're looking for a mascara from a company that calls themselves clean, um, I still use a lot of brands that call themselves clean, but that is not like a prerequisite for makeup usage for me. Um, Jones Road Beauty. This is honestly one of my absolute favorite mascaras for like a false lash effect. It's stunning and it wears so, so well. I don't even normally like brushes like this, okay? Normally I like a silicone kind of brush, um, but this one's like a very thick, like teddy bear style. But the way that this hugs your lashes and lifts them and makes them so dark and basically perfect all day. I think this is a fantastic mascara. So if you're looking for like clean, which is, you know, it's going to mean something different to everybody. If you're looking for a brand that calls themselves clean, um, this is a fantastic mascara.
Okay, so those are all of my tips and solutions to questions and problems that you guys have all said you are having with your makeup. I hope that this has been informative and helpful. If it is, let me know down below if you try this and if it does help you out. If you do have some questions and you're struggling with your makeup, please drop those in the comments down below. I'd love to do another video like this. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. That way you can see more of this type of content. I'll see you next time. Bye.